There are some customers that want to sell their homes and buy Bitcoin. Why my salary from one week to another just lost 30% of purchase power? I think it's a great opportunity here because probably your sons are going to ask you why you didn't bought Bitcoin when it was 10,000. It's obvious that this is going to be go up. At the beginning, it was one peso, one dollar, and the weekend later, it was instead of one pesos, it was four pesos. It was a chaos. Now, actually, 23 years later is one dollar is 1230 pesos bitcoiners know that that is not the best solution but many in general people think that us dollar is the best solution i'm still crazy for many people because i i just still after 10 years they don't get it yeah you will have one headache every four years but then you will have many happy times you are i don't know like kind of a legend 10 years uh, you're making Bitcoin content uh, in in Spanish. Are you? Did you start with Bitcoin or like even or crypto and uh, uh, blockchain in general, or how did you start? Well, at that time uh, it didn't exist crypto, <laughs> so it was Bitcoin only. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, it was. Uh, I I started by by an error actually because I was looking for a job. Uh, I I was graduated as industrial engineer. And then I, I did some entrepreneurs, uh, entrepreneurships. And then I, I started working at a company to develop uh, as a product manager to develop uh, content uh, apps for, for a American uh, clients. Uh, and then I, I was tired. I wanted to change and I, I put my profile in, um, ah, I, I just forgot uh, the, 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 the website. Uh, to look for jobs, you know. Um, so there I receive after a few months, weeks, I receive an email saying, hey, we are looking for a person uh, to be the Latin American, uh, you know, uh, business dev for our company. And, uh, and when I start reading about the company, it was a company that at that time wanted to connect wanted to let people buy Bitcoin by uh, via a brick and mortar store uh, on the street. Okay, so uh, they want me to talk to to talk to these networks, and so the, those networks can connect to the to the uh, to the company to the app, and people can buy Bitcoin with cash in those networks, those brick and mortar stores that you know in in Latin America and they are quite common. So, well, that's when I said, okay, what is this? What is Bitcoin? And I started doing some research a few months before uh, with some conversations with friends. We said, oh, Bitcoin, you know, it's very expensive. It's $300. $300. So it was really, really expensive for, at that time. Uh, but then I said, okay, I'm going to jump on this and start uh, working, connecting with people in the industry in Argentina. Um, at that time, we were very few, but it was very, very energetic and with a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, vision of the future, of the potential of the technology because of our history. Uh, so, yeah, I joined um, uh, this company for a few months and then I realized that I wanted to learn more and I didn't find any content So in Spanish. So a few months later, I got co-founded Betes in Espanol with a partner at that time. And we start creating content uh, essentially based on the, um, on the book from Mastering Bitcoin from Andreas Antonopoulos, the first version. So we started reading content from there, some videos on YouTube, and we create, without wanting to be, we created the first vi uh, videos in Spanish in YouTube about Bitcoin. And I think at that time, uh, in general, Bitcoin content was quite rare, right? There was not a lot of videos. There were not a lot of things. Yeah. Like, I, I think for people that come into the space now, it's kind of hard to understand because there's so many Bitcoin-only content creators, Bitcoin-only uh, podcasters. And, and back then, there was like, yeah, there was this one book and there was some other things, but yeah. it was quite empty, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, essentially, yeah. So it was, uh, you know, very lonely uh, trip. <laughs> <laughs> but but we we knew that we were uh, that, that 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 was important for for the rest of the few of the next years 
And after many, many years, um, so, so essentially we create um, 24 videos uh, and then uh, we stopped creating content for five years because I started working on the, on the industry in different companies. Uh, and that actually, you know, those videos were generating views uh, organically. Uh, and at, before restarting in 2019, because in 2019, I restarted to, to publish more content. Uh, but before, just with only 24 videos, we had 10,000 followers and many, many views. Um, and also, we I co-create BTC in Portuguese, BTC in Portuguese. So we create a few few videos there, and and the, there are only ten videos that are published. But at that time, we recorded twenty videos, but we couldn't sell it to the sponsors because you know Bitcoin was going down, and and you know the, there wasn't many support at that time for for creating content so yeah it, it's been a wild ride uh since the beginning and after many years a lot of people of the community that are already working on on bitcoin on or creating a, a educational content or creating companies they tell ah, oh, oh yeah i remember that i watched the first videos that i watched were from betas en espanol and so that that's uh that's you know it's a. Uh, it's very very good to hear uh, that at, at some point uh, we add value uh, to them. Yeah, really really cool. And and at that time you also lived in Argentina or you were already yeah, in yeah. Spain? No no I, I lived in in Argentina yeah yeah. So 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 you uh, lived in a time in Argentina where you discovered Bitcoin where you also discovered the, the big problem with with fiat currencies uh, in in the Argentine. Well, actually, I discovered the the inflationary problems before that, <laughs> before Bitcoin. <laughs> so as 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 living in Argentina uh, for like many years, I mean 30, 30 when I, when I was thirty two, I, I I moved from Argentina. Uh, actually, sorry, uh, 34. I moved from Argentina. So uh, at that time, uh, yeah, I, I suffered many, um, you know, uh, inflationary situations. And it was, for me, it was like, why my salary from one day to another, one week to another, just lost 30% of, uh, you know, uh, buy, buy, buying purchases, you know? Um, sorry purchase power. So I was like, why is this? I just wanted to, to learn more. And and then when I realized that Bitcoin was a solution for that, I said, oh, mm -hmm. okay, this sounds very interesting. And I can tell you a story like, you know, I was like uh, seven years old and I used to work, my, my grandparents had a, a, a bakery. So I used to help go there and I help them and I just, you know, do clean some things and, and help them. And they pay me uh, in pesos, Argentinian pesos. So uh, at that time I said, okay, I want to buy like a little toy, you know, it was the Rambo uh, toy, uh, you know, and, and I just want to want to do that. And, and I went to the toy store and I said, okay, how much is this? And one day it was like 30. And I said, okay, uh, one week later, uh, I go back to buy it and it was like 55, you know, it was like, wow, what, what is going on? I just, I, I mean, I cannot buy it now, you know? Uh, so it was that, those type of issues that, you know, you, you, I was only seven years, so it was like, you know, it was very painful. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and, and then we had other situations throughout our life. In 2001, we had one, one big devaluation of, at the beginning, it was like one peso, one dollar, and, and a few weeks or weekend later, it was one pesos was, sorry, one dollar was, instead of one pesos, it was four pesos. So it was a, a ca chaos. And now, now actually, 23 years later is one dollar is 1230 pesos so you can imagine 
and that and it's so so internally uh uh assume and, and and vivid for argentinians that we that is one of the reasons why bitcoin it was so popular or it is so popular in in argentina yeah, and uh how how popular is uh, is bitcoin in argentina right now is it like if you had to guess uh, an adoption rate is like more than 10 20 percent or is it maybe even like around 50 percent no so it, it's very low low yet still it still is very low um so not not many people uh accept bitcoin that's the truth um but it's been a a, a change when stable coins arrive because we had also uh throughout many of the history many people or i would say most of the people think that the us dollar is like a good uh heaven to save their uh, to store their, their savings we we bitcoiners know that that is not the best solution but many in general people think that us dollar is the best solution um so they usually started to be more uh user for users for stable coins instead of bitcoin so but you know that's the that's part of the evolution uh of moving forward to go from stable coin to bitcoin and and i think the use just the use of wallets uh uh you know to be uh custodials uh, auto custodial wallets um or non-custodial wallet that's that's a big uh, step uh, moving forward from most of the people and probably the next evolution step is going to be to just use bitcoin but for that we need to wait if, some time i remember in 2014 in january 2014 i went to the north american bitcoin conference that it was the conference where uh, Vitalik Buterin presented Ethereum. It was just a, a paper. And at that time, the main sponsor of the event was BitPay. And I remember listening to people and on the stage that, you know, oh, you know, uh, we're in 2014. In, by 2020, everybody, everybody is going to use Bitcoin, you know. So that was the expectation. And we know that that didn't happen. Uh, so yeah, I, I heard many, many, uh, how would you say that many wishes to, to start, you know, that it's very easy to wish something, you no, know, to make it fast. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, you know, what, what I think is that one of the main handbrake that we have, uh, for a technology to be implemented is the, the the human ability to accept changes. So that's, uh, you know, we know that the technology it needs to improve, it's improving, that's fine. But what I think is the hardest part is that the human uh, adaptation to a change. And that is not so easy. After so many, many decades of using one uh, or centuries using one other system, you know. Yeah, it's interesting for me um, when when I talk with people from Argentina or Turkey, where like there's a really high inflation rate, um, and they usually don't flee to Bitcoin; they more flee to like stable coins on US, uh, USDC or something like yeah. that, uh, because for them US dollar is like really safe, even though it still has quite quite a lot of inflation, but like not compared to, to the Argentine peso or the Turkish lira. So that's that's really interesting for me to to see why people flee to the next better one and not to the best one so like they they, they kind of want to have a little bit better and not not not, not yeah. the best form like the, why as as you're from argentina like why do you think that is like why do people go to like oh let's let's go to the us uh, us dollar and and not directly go to like oh maybe bitcoin with us dollar like they it's a there can be an argument made like 90% in Bitcoin and maybe 10% uh, with USDC to have like something short term. Yeah, that's a very interesting question. Uh, and that is the same question that I ask to my parents. <laughs> because, yeah, you know, why, why, why are you doing that? You know, uh, and again, that is, that is 
so inside the, the, the man, my, their mindset and it's very difficult for them to change because me, for many decades, uh, the best place was to buy bit, uh, US dollars and to have the bills at home and, and without even in the bank because they already didn't trust on the bank. And so, um, yeah, so that's, be, and, and, you know, the, there is some, uh, for many years, the U.S. economy was like the biggest one. Uh, it still is the big, biggest one, but we know that this is this might might change. Uh, but um, there is some some kind of um, how do you say that sense of they are doing things the right way or they are doing things better than us. And at some point, it makes sense because you have the huge economy, worldwide economy versus Argentinian economy is very small. You have, uh, you know, uh, you need to find something else that is stronger than you. So, uh, and, and also it's accepted all over the world. So, and you can fly to Europe, you can fly to anywhere to Brazil and they accept dollars everywhere they accept dollars. So, yeah. And, and if the, do the dollar, you have the US dollar like a bill and, and you know, it's much better than having a pesos that go up, that go down, that go down and, and generally goes up because you need more pesos to buy one, one Bitcoin, one uh, dollar, sorry. So yeah, um, that is something that uh, it's complicated and, and it's, I think over time is people are asking more questions. And I also, yeah, I, I'm still crazy for many people because I, I just, uh, you know, still at, after 10 years. So they just, you know, they don't get it yet. And it's, it's fascinating because I, especially if you see the purchasing power increase over 10 years in Bitcoin, it's like, it, it, it's yeah. pretty obvious the best choice <laughs> against everything else. Um, yeah. And you talked about how people in 2014 said like, oh, in 2020, we will have uh, mass adoption and then everything like that. Obviously, that turned out to be wrong. Um, what do you think is an, an realistic expectation of when we get to a point where most people have Bitcoin as a store of value and it's kind of getting more and more accepted in, in, in restaurants and bars. Uh, I mean, right now, we the store of value aspect really plays out uh, quite quickly now with like companies coming in, ETFs coming in, and, and even countries with El Salvador com coming in and, and buying Bitcoin. Um, but what, what would you say is like a realistic expectation of, of when does this happen? So I, I think it's about incentives. Uh, so I don't know. Um, I don't know, I don't have a timing, uh, but if something really hurts on your business, in your pocket, to your pocket, trust me that you're going to find whatever way you will have at your disposal to solve that problem. So if you, know, you have a bank account, you have money, and the government just said, okay, you cannot take that money, you just take, uh, I don't know, 1% every week of that money, trust me that you are going to start looking for other options, okay? So that that is what what motivates Argentinian because that what happened in 2001. You couldn't take all your money off your bank account. Actually, they said you, you had US dollar in your bank account. You, don't, you cannot take those dollars. Uh, so it was really, really uh, uh, complicated. Um, so I, I, I think that if we have like a bad situation, economical situation, that is going to open the eyes of many, many like regular people, you know, people that have a bar that have, you know, they don't understand Bitcoin yet and they don't care about Bitcoin because they are fine. You know, they receive the, the, the earn money, they are fine. Okay. And when you have some. Uh, governments or for some reason that they start having more uh, restrictions on your money, you are going to start thinking, hey, why this 
you know, why this is happening? Is, is there an option? And then they are going to start, uh, you know, thinking and alternatives, you know? So uh, not all the people, unfortunately, not all the people are interested in learning about, about uh, finance or economics things unfortunately and that is something that all of us that we are creating content we are trying to to learn ourselves and also to teach and to explain why it's important bitcoin uh why it's important to to have your own uh um you know uh custody of your funds and why it's important to to have privacy so uh i think it's it's a matter of time uh, I think when something, I, I, I'm not trying to think, to think like something like a big episode or catastrophic episode happened, but when, you know, like, like that's, um, analogy with the frog, with the, co the water that is getting cold and then it suddenly is that, that dies. And if, if it jumped to the hot water, you know, just realize that don't need to be there. So when something um, really uh, start to uh, disincentivize people to use the current system, then they will find Bitcoin. It's really interesting with the frog. And uh, it's, it's interesting. I, I looked that thing up once, uh, if, if it's actually true with the frog, if it actually stays in the water. <laughs> <laughs> it, it turns out it's it's actually, actually the, the frog will jump out at some point. Like there was like a research group that actually tried that out <laughs> for some reason. Nice. Uh, so that's also my hope. That's also my hope that uh, the people yeah. uh, don't burn in fear, but at some point just jump out. And it's interesting when we think of like, oh, people now fleeing to the US dollar, uh, even in Argentina and other countries, they flee there because they don't have... A, uh, a choice somewhere else and US dollar seems to be the next logical thing. But what if the US dollar is like the peso today? What if the US dollar and the US dollar is still the best one, but it has already this like 100% or 150% yes. of inflation. Yes. Then it's interesting where, where will people go? Will they go to uh, buy gold? Will they go to buy some meme coin, some shit coin? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't think so. I think they, they will go to Bitcoin because at that point, Bitcoin is probably already very big and is probably way stabler than any other fiat currency. Uh, and uh, I think that could be that frog moment of the frog jumping out of the hot water <laughs> and hopefully people uh, uh, go to, to, to Bitcoin. So I, I, I like the, the analogy with, with the pain that you made, like the pain uh, is, is not high enough for people and the pain get, gets higher, then yeah. people uh, jump out. But it, it's, it's hard to say when, when the pain will be that bad, be, that big. And yeah, if, if, if what Bitcoin also then does to, to the fiat currency, because people, a lot of people argue that Bitcoin actually will make uh, the fiat currency medium term better as they all of a sudden have serious competition <laughs> with, with Bitcoin and people have actually have an exit wealth with Bitcoin. So that's, that's interesting to, to witness. And I think the next let, 10 years will be funny. Let, let me tell you one, one story uh, that for me was very surprising. I, I'm giving some, um, uh, you know, in-person courses. And I had two people in the last course and those are from the real estate industry. They have a, a, you know, a real estate company, a small company, but they buy and sell, help buyers and sellers, you know, and I ask them, why are you learning about Bitcoin? And they say, because uh, there are some customers that want to sell their homes and buy Bitcoin. So they want to know how to do that, how, how to manage that. Uh, they want to know what is transaction, how does it work? So we are seeing some small, uh, you know, um, uh, facts that this is slowly changing. And there are some people realizing that, um, yeah, some, something different needs to be done. Absolutely. And it's interesting, um, the comparison of like getting to real estate all of a sudden 
uh, from Real Estate All of the Sun to Bitcoin, I had like, I don't know, probably like 20 guests already on that came from Real Estate and actually then got to Bitcoin because they were like, oh, Bitcoin is actually like Real Estate without the headache. <laughs> <laughs> And you, yeah, you, you will have one headache every four years, but then you will have many happy bad times uh, all over, you know, you know? Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah, def definitely, definitely we are seeing that, that trend and, um, yeah, I, I think it's slowly and then suddenly things are going to happen. Um, uh, we, 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 I remember in 2013, 2014, many people said, oh, no, you know, this is going to, we are going to have a government buying Bitcoin or companies buying Bitcoin. You know, it, it was like, I didn't understood at that time. Uh, I didn't understand at that time. So it was really, uh, I was amazed of those guys at that, at that time. They, they were just saying, you know, this is going to be huge. And I was I wasn't a hundred percent sure to be honest. And but then you know learning more, asking people, going to conferences all over the world, and and yeah, that that's uh, I think it's it's been a very very interesting journey. And and one of the things that I I wanted to to I don't know if this has happened to you, but the, one of the most or I would say the most uh, interesting things of, of this is. The quality of people that you meet in all all the events uh, and the, the the stories uh, and why they are in Bitcoin uh, and uh, it's very interesting and and I, I I've been having uh, and I met many people all over the world very interesting people and all, always open to do business or have a conversation so I think the community the Bitcoiners community I think is also one of the biggest strength of this technology. Yeah, one hundred percent. The 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 community is amazing. I, I mm. love it so much. It's yeah. you meet really great people in there. And one thing that I also want to touch on because I think that's that that's especially for new people that come now in this scene a really interesting insight. You said before when Bitcoin was at three hundred US dollars that you felt Bitcoin is expensive, which from now on, from the perspective from now feels like that's ridiculous. Like $300 is like so cheap in, in Bitcoin terms. Yeah. Um, but it seems to be like everyone always feels that Bitcoin is expensive whenever they, they join. Even it was like at $1, $2, yeah. they're like those tweets are like, oh, boy, Bitcoin is already at like uh, the US dollar level at $1. Like it it's, it's always feels like expensive. Like, first of all, like why do you think that is and, and why do you think that's that's not true? Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a say there uh, in the community, you, you deserve your, the Bitcoin that, you know, the price of the Bitcoin yeah, that you deserve, you know. Um, so th there, are, there are so many ways to think Bitcoin when you think it from the conver conversion of energy into something to value. Uh, uh, so it's so profound uh, and it's so big that we still don't realize that i remember uh to those same guys those friends uh i think it was in 2020 i uh and and the bitcoin it was uh, around 10,000 and i said you know but I, I think it's a great opportunity here because probably your sons are going to ask you why you didn't bought you didn't buy bitcoin when it was 10,000 and uh, and yeah and, and they they didn't buy yet and you know it's 68 today uh, so um, I think be, be, I, I'm not a guy that I, I talk about pricing on my, my channel because I, I don't do an uh, anal price analysis I think it's it's obvious that this is going to be go up um, you know uh, so and I don't I don't do that. I, I just teach people how to use tools for using Bitcoin. Um, so um, yeah, for me, it's, right now Bitcoin is cheap. Also, <laughs> so, uh, it depends on your mindset, and I think that that's definitely what what changed uh, what uh, what those big big uh, funds 
are doing. They are buying tons of Bitcoins, thousands of Bitcoins, because they changed their mindset. They, they, changed, the, they changed their view of, of the technology or on the potential of this. So to be honest, I don't know why people that don't want to buy Bitcoin think that they are more clever than those guys, you know, <laughs> at that time, they, and they are really focused on that. They have people, teams of people studying things and, and new things. And, and you know, I so, wow. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we will see. If you watch my podcast already for more than two times, you know how extremely passionate I am about self-custody. And the first very, very, very important step to self-custody is always getting yourself a hardware wallet and i have one for you here this is the bitcoin only edition from the bitbox my favorite single signature hardware wallet on the market another really important piece of self-custody if you have a hardware wallet is the backup of the seed phrase and bitbox made the perfect solution to back up your seed phrase they made a reusable steel wallet check out that beauty it's durable and extremely heavy if I put it on the desk I seriously feel for my own table it's so so heavy and durable I love it this is where my seed phrase is secure go to bitbox.swiss robin to get your bitbox and if you use code robin you even get 5% off of your complete order and the next step is to really level up your sovereignty as an individual you have to have the most secure self custody setup you have to secure your own devices you have to protect your privacy you have to set up an inheritance plan and depending on where you live you even want to have a plan b a citizenship where you can move in case something goes really really wrong and through all those steps the bitcoin way is guiding you through step by step and if you visit the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash robin you even get a 30 minute free call to find out how you can level up your sovereignty and last but not least i have something completely new for you guys i partnered up with coin vigilante this is the most beautiful bitcoin timepiece that i ever saw created by anyone look at that beauty i love it so much coin vigilante made a perfect bitcoin watch that's the perfect subtle elegant way to go out there and show that you are a bitcoiner and that watch brand is bitcoin only and coin vigilante just dropped a completely new and amazing genesis edition of their watch collections you have the date of the first ever mined bitcoin block in there and of course also the block height and which epoch we are currently in i love the level of detail they put in in this masterpiece and make sure to check out those amazing coin vigilante timepieces down in the descriptions i love those watches so so much yeah, absolutely that's uh, that's an interesting thing like the, the the people always come into Bitcoin and they, they think they can fix it. They can think that, oh, no, it's not, not that. And they always think like, oh, yeah, I, I discovered what's wrong with Bitcoin. And all the people before never discovered that. They, they, they are not as smart as me. <laughs> so that's the that's thing that yeah. most people, when, when they come into the, the thing. Um, also really interesting, uh, I think you, uh, in one video, I, I saw that I <laughs> let transcript from, from ChatGPT because I don't understand Spanish. I think you talked also about human rights and how Bitcoin is, is, a, is, a, is a tool for that. Is, that. is that right or was there a translation error? Uh, I, I think, I, I, think I, I talk about it, yeah. I, I, I honestly think that, that is, uh, yeah, it's, it's a good tool. Again, it, uh, Bitcoin is a tool. Uh, to so I, I think it's a tool that can be used for as a human right yes uh i don't remember where i said that to be honest uh, on the video uh but definitely is is something that um allows a marginal people to live and we are seeing this in venezuela venezuela is a Worst case, or, or at least I don't know about uh, Turkey because I don't have connection. But in Venezuela, I know many, many people that uh, because of they, they live in Venezuela, 
And also, I know stories about people living in Venezuela with Bitcoin and, you know, working, receiving Bitcoin and paying stuff in Venezuela. And they live like rich people because that solved a, a, a problem. Um, so, yeah, the Bitcoin solves so many problems that, um, yeah, that, that you can you can see from many different uh, aspects because... Um, yeah, you, you can solve the problem of restriction to access to your money. You can solve the problem of uh, inflation o over time. You can solve a problem to send money from one place to another. So, yeah, you, you, you solve many, many, many problems that unfortunately we as, uh, as humans, we already have. I, I, I was reading to the Human Rights Foundation website the other day. And they say that 50% of the of the population is under authoritarian uh, government, right? Uh, probably because of China or Russia, you know, population they are big. I, I I'm not sure about those statistics, but it's a huge number. I mean, it's not 10%. It's not 20. It's 50. Uh, so definitely, the uh, Bitcoin is a solution for for many of them. And we probably, we are seeing other use cases that we don't already don't know what is happening. What, what do you think is the, the role that, that Bitcoin plays in that, that sovereignty uh, mindset? And do you also have like um, other things that you say, like oh, we, if you have Bitcoin, that's great for your, uh, for your money uh, sovereignty. But you also need like some other tools uh, that, that you uh, kind of discovered. Oh, yes, that, that's been a journey for me also, because when you realized about privacy stuff uh, and, yeah, and security, so your, your rabbit hole is bigger, bigger, <laughs> and many, many. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think I, what, what, what I, first of all, uh, you you know, we, we need to start with the very, very essential things. And many, many people don't use these very, very essential tools like a, a password admin or, or password generator uh, software, for example, you know. Um, how do you say password is, a, yeah, um, for example, I use Bitwarden. Oh yeah, password manager. Password manager, yeah. So that is so essential for not only Bitcoin. I mean, Bitcoin is just a small part because I, obviously you are not going to put your seat on on a password manager. But this digital uh, environment that we are moving uh, every day more and more and more. You need some very, very basic things, and you don't even have a password manager, you know. So I, I think the, the, to be to have a, a higher level of so sovereignty and privacy, you need to start doing layers and layers and layers of, of things. And and yeah, what I, what I suggest to people is to go to a password ma uh, manager today. Don't waste more time. At the beginning, I was. Re I, I didn't want it to change, but then it was a before and after for me. And then, um, yeah, start using 2FA, uh, double factor authentication to everywhere as much as you can without SMS, just the, uh, you know, authentication uh, tools. Um, and then uh, in terms of the mobile phones, I'm uh, an Apple user uh, so far. But I've been, you know, I, I need to make my time to m migrate to some other stuff like uh, Grafeno OS. Uh, I don't know if you heard about it. Yes. So I, I think that's much better solution uh, in terms of privacy. So that is something that I, I, I have the phone here, actually. I have it here. Uh, I have a pixel. But... Uh, I didn't, I have it for a few months. I, I didn't have a time to do the tutorial, but definitely, uh, you know, that is something that I, I, I wanted to do. It's not Bitcoin related, but it's more privacy and, and so, so self-sovereignty 
uh, tools. Um, yeah, uh, so I, I, I think they are go hand in hand, both topics. And uh, at the end, what you want is to have a, a human that is going to be able to do whatever it wants um, without any limitation, especially from governments. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. How important, like, um, I think most people are very convenient with their uh, digital lifestyle <laughs> and they use whatever, like, their OS is, <coughs> sorry, their OS is uh, suggesting them. So they use the password managers that Apple and Google provides for them. Uh, they use two-factor authentication only if they are, like, asked to do that and, and, and those basic things. Why do you? Why is that so important for someone to do uh, the basic security, to do the basic privacy, uh, and and why could it be very critical in the future? So essentially, uh, because of history, and history tells us uh, that those databases are stolen, are being hacked, and essentially, uh, for a hacker to access to that information, to the password, to an email, is going to be easy. It's relatively easy and it's going to be easier over time. And, and, and for the hackers, uh, it's very, very, very easy uh, to say, OK, if this user have this email in for this bank, probably what happen if we create a bot and instead of checking if this email and password goes to this bank, what happens if we try this in thousands of banks? If we try this same combination into thousands of, of, of social network accounts? What if we do this with thousands of exchanges all over the world? And it's very easy to do it. Uh, so you program something and you take a database from thousands and millions probably of combination of password and emails, and you just do that. So. That is very easy. And if you repeat your password all over every time, uh, I think that is, I used to do that in the past. And I just realized that that's the worst, the worst uh, um, a situation. And because that, that is really, uh, really uh, easy. And, uh, you know, I have a family group and, and some people, Say so, you know, uh, I created one uh, one bar one account here, and you know, I always remember the may the the password because it's the same that I use everywhere, you know, and it's a problem because I I, I wrote it down in a note in a pencil in a pen, and uh, you know, if I lose this uh, this book uh, little book, I you know, you lose access to everything. Um, and I, and I actually send them, Hey, you know, I did a tutorial about it. So I just send it to my, my own family. Uh, yeah. And, and then I said, Oh, well, well, thank you. Thank you. And I bet you that nobody did it yet <laughs> because I didn't receive any questions. So for sure they didn't do it and they have the information and it's, and it's very, very easy and it's free. You don't have to pay for anything. It's your time only. So again, uh, it's about changing how the minds of the human work and, and how they are, they, they just want to say, oh, you know, nothing happened to me so far. So, you know, everything is good. And sometimes it happened to me with other stuff, but uh, we need to fight those t kind of uh, tricks of our mind that, you know, wanted to auto convince that everything is, is okay. Well, definitely it's not. That's really interesting. Uh, we we, we kind of have to like really get down the rabbit hole and say like, oh, my security, my uh, safety is really important uh, and we have to do something for that. I think that's that's really important to, to do. Um, for for the for the podcast, um, we we have one more topic that I really want to to get into the the adoption curve of of Bitcoin moving forward. We we did it already a little bit before. Um, we, we talked about uh, the what what adoption barriers could could be in in Bitcoin. How how you see the, the future of it? Um, one interesting question that I was thinking of, like when you could design a, a world where, like, like you you could from scratch do a society. You can uh, design something that is 
uh, completely new around Bitcoin. And maybe then we can also go into like, oh, how, how can maybe in the future uh, a Bitcoin world uh, look like or like where more open source and more decentralized networks, maybe even with Nostra, uh, can interact. How do you envision that kind of a future? How do you see uh, a, a world where Bitcoin already succeeded, no matter like when this is, probably <laughs> some, some, some years out, uh, and where like open source and privacy and security is like really on the forefront of everyone's mind? How, how do you envision that? Uh, that is a very deep and, and interesting question. I never, I never think about it. Um, what I did is I participated in few, some conversations of people that wanted to create like a community, a small community with Bitcoiners that shares the same values. So if I wanted to create that, those kind of stuff, uh, I think uh, there are kind of uh, two big topics to, to, to talk and, and to set at the beginning. One is going to be the values that you want to share within that community and that population. I think that's uh, that's the, the 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 basic thing uh, that allows a population to to have some stability and some common sense and some framework. And the other thing is uh, incentives. How the incentives are going to work because you need to have incentives for people to invest in that community and, and you need to have incentives for uh, being governed in X, Y, in, in a way that everybody uh, or not everybody or that makes sense for everybody and essentially learn from other experiences. Um, I remember when I, I used to work at Consensus you know, consensus. Uh, I, that was my area, area in in uh, Ethereum ecosystem. Uh, so I, I used to work there. I worked for a year uh, developing the business in Mexico and Colombia and Central America. And at that time, I remember, you know, everybody, let's do very decentralized company and let's do everything, you know, on your own with your team, etc. And it was like an ideal, ideal dream or, of a company. And then uh, I remember that, that there was, there is, there is a book, I don't remember the name, but there is a book that talks about decentralized uh, organizations. Uh, it was written by a French author, author. I, don't, I don't remember the, the name, but uh, I, I, so I'm bad with the names. But I remember that it, we were about to have a call with this guy, with the author of this guy, and, and I, I read the book and, and I learned of the, of the experience of groups, small groups, or it was like auto-organized and they achieved a lot of very, 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 very high standard things. And it was really, very interesting. And we were about to have the, the the call with this guy, you know, the week after, uh, you know, one week late after that time. Uh, and, and I confirmed, yeah, I want to participate. And let's say that that, that was in Monday or Tuesday. And that weekend we had a, um, we had a, a, an, a, an event in Chile. And I remember that we went to that event that was on Friday. We set the, the stage, you know, the, we had our booth with everything, you know, and it was, we were there talking with people, projects, etc. And then uh, at the end of that day, they told us, okay, tomorrow, 9 a.m., we have a meeting. It was like, okay, let's have a meeting. We have a meeting. Our, essentially, we were all fired from the company. Uh, just like that. And we had the booth there, you know, with the company. And, you know, we said, okay, we are not part of this company. And because they, they just let people go from many, many places all over the world. The company was really big. Price of Bitcoin went of crypto in general went down. And so they reduced the stuff. They did a huge reduction of stuff all over the world. And unfortunately, I couldn't go to that 
meeting with this guy of the uh, the centralized organization because of this. I, I, I'm not sure that that meeting was done, but um, that was a huge, um, you know, learning process because if, if you want to have the ideal, the ideal um, society, the ideal community, it's not easy. Um, but I, I think if you have like the, those values that you share and you have the incentives correctly aligned, um, I think that, that, that there are higher chances that you can make a, a community more uh, free and, and yeah, and, and with a higher level of, of um, you know, happiness or fulfillment of the individual that lives there in that community. Was that book a uh, reinventing organization? That that you was, uh, yeah. yeah. Like ChatGPT is amazing. <laughs> There you go. There you go. I, I basically Thank just you. like uh, a book about decentralized organization uh, by a French author, and it's like, ah, that's it. <laughs> Thanks, Chat GPT. But yeah, it's an interesting insight. Uh, I think uh, the the future will be quite interesting. I I, I love to um, think about the the future generations and how how we will. Uh, deal with stuff when Bitcoin and all those open source uh, things actually succeed and we can move on from the world that we live today to a completely new world, but it will be a long transitioning time and let's see if I can even live in that, that time if I live that long. Really good. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what I've learned is that we, we, uh, we all imagine those situations or those community ideas communities i think that is something that it's been in the human brain throughout history uh and the the thing there is going to be that okay let's say that you create your ideal community but definitely that idea community is going to be connected in some way with the rest of the world so yeah how do you do that? And we, you, you can see you can see those examples of those community of you know um, I forgot the name of those small community religious communities that, for example, move from Europe to Latin America and they have they work on on the land and they have their own thing and they are happy with that and and uh, over time they are they learn that need to be open with the society to learn, to, to sell the, their products, everything. But they, they keep their those values and they keep the incentives uh, aligned at some point. So I, I think it's very interesting to, to, to learn from them. And they are really successful in, for example, in Mexico, they, they started, they, they, they told them, hey, you know, get this land for free. And it was very added, added land. Over years, decades, one is one of the biggest uh, land, uh, fertile land in, in, in Mexico because they work uh, every day and, you know, and they, they just wanted to have one objective. And, they, uh, and now they, it's very, very, uh, um, very big uh, you know, business for them. Do you think uh, on, on that note of future <laughs> civilizations, is Bitcoin ready to be multi-planetary? Is Bitcoin ready to be uh, a currency that's not only on Earth successful? So I think it's going to be a matter of communication. How do you communicate the blockchain? <laughs> or, you know, how do you communicate in, in between planetaries at some point? Uh, maybe you can do uh, like side chains in each planet, are, planet, planet uh, I don't know, and they communicate because you have the light, the, the restriction there is going to be the light speed. Uh, um, so I, I guess I'm not a, a scientific, but th I think that, that eventually is going to be a need uh, in many years from now. Absolutely. Really cool. I, I, I just wanted to throw that in because we, 
we talked about the future and uh, it's 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 a question i think that's really interesting to think about but not something that concerns us uh in in the near future no. as, as yeah. a lot of people are outside of the yeah. earth uh really cool um before we go to the end routine i always have one question that is always the same for every guest what can we learn from you besides all the things that we already talked about hmm. well uh related to bitcoin or to other stuff Whatever you want, like uh, outside of Bitcoin is is perfect. Ah, okay, okay, yeah. Well, so re re related to Bitcoin, um, what you can learn from me, I, I mean, if you have, I I drop mo most of my uh, knowledge um, naturally, or it's a studying process uh, into the YouTube channel with the deep, many many hundreds of videos. Um, and we learn uh, how to use tools uh, uh, and tips for using Bitcoin in Spanish. Uh, but naturally, that is going to over over the next few months or years. You know, that is not going to be a restriction because you know it's, everything is going to be translated into whatever language that we, you want to listen to it. And so eventually, the language is not going to be a, a, a barrier. Um, so if you want to have like high quality videos, tutorial videos, that would be an option. Some, some people tell that uh, I'm the better sessions or in Spanish with asteroid. I, I heard about, <laughs> you know, but uh, I don't consume asteroid. Uh, and, and I think Ben from better session is doing a great job on, in, in English. He's, he's great. Um, so uh, that that's, regarding uh, Bitcoin and well, I, my, one of my other, my passions outside Bitcoin is sailing. So I love sailing. So I, I, I can teach people to, to sail and, and yeah, and do stuff on the water. The sailing is really, uh, it's interesting. Uh, uh, it's, but not more with motor, like just with the wind, right? Sailing. Sorry. With, with with the with the wind and not with the um, yeah, uh, yeah. motor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, with the with the with the wind. Yes, and th that actually uh, I didn't realize, but that actually is an uh, an expression uh, of of freedom because uh, at that at, you know five hundred or many more years ago, it was a technology that people used to to have freedom or ex escape from, from stuff, you know? And I think Michael Saylor has, has a boat on the, uh, on the back or on its office. And he talks about that, that was a technology. Uh, so yeah, um, that's very interesting analogy. Uh, and yeah. Having a boat in the backyard to, to 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 drive away all the time that's that's a that's a good way to secure yourself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> travel. Yeah, you know, you, you know, you 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 go sailing and then you lost all your Bitcoin because they fall to the sea. <laughs> but uh, the the this is the one thing. Uh, I mean. It, it's kind of because th that's the one argument I would not use. Like if I want to be a criminal, if I want to say like, oh, my, my, I don't have access to my Bitcoin anymore. I think a really bad thing to say is like, oh, I lost them in, in the sea because then they cannot move anymore. And if they actually move again, then they're like, oh, why did they move again? Uh, so then they have questions around that. But uh, yeah, yeah. maybe a better thing is to, to say is like, oh, yeah, they got hacked or something like that. That's um, <laughs> By the way, so all, all the time when I see some some public story on Bitcoin, my Bitcoin got hacked, and I'm like, maybe he just like needs public backing for that story. Yeah, you never know about it, and uh, and you know that 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 is a huge thing for inheritance. You know, inheritance is a huge topic, and I've been learning about it. I recently published a video about you know three options. And there are so many other uh, things to consider. Um, yeah, uh, so that's another thing for another topic. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're already at, at, at one hour, but I think I think I saw that video. You, you talked about Casa Unchained and, and the third yeah. one, right? And Nunchuk, yeah. 
Ah, non c'è yeah, yeah. A really cool, yeah. I think they are, they are great options if you want to have collaborative multisig uh, and with collaborative multisig, uh, then inheritance also gets easier. I think that's a, it's a great option to, to consider if you, if you want to do that. Yeah. Really cool. Perfect. And thank you so much. Uh, we have now our end routine where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest without knowing who the next guest actually is. Um, the question for you from the previous guest is what needs to happen that you change your mind on Bitcoin and you sell it all? Ah, very interesting. Very interesting one. So, uh, yeah, the only reason why I, I would change or sell Bitcoin is because the energy is zero you know if the energy goes to zero okay i will send my bitcoin the energy in the in the in the how do you say that in the existing uh space so that is going to be probably zero chances uh but essentially because of the energy if we have no energy we have no bitcoin you, you mean uh, the the energy and electricity going off worldwide, or nobody is mining anymore? No, 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 no planets, no, no, no stars bigger than that. Oh, so like that complete. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. That, that that's fascinating. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I think then we have different problems, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, interplanetary Bitcoin. Uh, yeah, uh, so because it's essentially it's energy. So it's energy you can find not only in the world, in, in our Earth, you can find it in many stars if you want. Thousand, millions of stars. So we don't know the limits. Yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting question to think about. Yeah, thank you so much, Joaquin, for, for being on the show. Uh, where can people find you when they want to ask questions? Where can people uh, watch your stuff? Yeah, so uh, you can you can search for BTC in Espanol, in Espanol, uh, and the user in X or Twitter, uh, BTC in Espanol. And um, we are also in TikTok and in Instagram. Um, but essentially, if you want to have a conversation, go to X or Twitter, uh, and we can have a conversation there. Really cool. Thank you so much for being on. Also, thank you so much for everyone that is watching and listening, as always. I'll be back uh, tomorrow with another episode. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.